Hello, bearded bee people. Welcome back to Bee and KBs. Uh, a really, really interesting subject to talk about now at this time of year is what do the bees do uh, throughout the winter? You know, I've got a lot of... Um, here's a sign of some bad insulation. That's not good. Right up there, too. There's probably some condensation as a result of that. Oh, and I've got... An obvious sign of something living underneath there. Hopefully they're not inside the hives. So what do the bees do? Well, uh, over the course of the latter part of the summer, they dwindle their population down and they rear winter bees which have enlarged specialized fat bodies inside of them so that they can hold on to nutrients and stay alive for a lot longer than the summer bees do. So they do that and then uh, October, you know, comes around and, and it starts to get really cold and they start to kind of condense and, and bring their cluster in tighter and tighter and tighter as the temperatures drop lower and lower and lower. And then when the temperatures are consistently below 40, they're consistently in cluster mode and inside that cluster, the outer layers of bees detach their wings from the muscles that move them. And they vibrate those muscles, creating friction, which creates heat. The inside of that cluster is nice and toasty warm and they can eat honey and they can do normal hive activities. Um, in the early portion of the winter there's usually not any brood so they can keep the temperature a little bit lower than they would if there was brood in the hive. So for right now we're going to assume that there's no brood and they have that temperature, uh, like I said, a little bit lower than it will be later on in the year. And so they move that cluster throughout the hive accessing all the honey that they had set up over the latter part of the summer and the early part of the fall. And uh, hopefully that honey, you know, uh, sustains them. If the temperatures stay steadily, you know, in that 40, 30 to 40 degree range, they can really sustain themselves on a very small amount of honey. So uh, this weather right now is really good. They're, they're just kind of cruising right through without using a whole lot. So as the days start to get longer, after December 21st, the winter solstice, the bees will start to rear brood again. Uh, the initial uh, brood rearing is to kind of uh, make up for some of the winter losses and then the brood nest grows and grows and grows as the days get longer and longer and longer and starts to uh, you know, plan for spring buildup. So at that time, the temperature has to remain higher, and uh, that's when we're in a more tricky and precarious situation where temperature fluctuations can, uh, can be a big issue, can be a real issue. So they'll spread their cluster out, having a, a higher temperature to maintain that brood, and then a quick cold snap can, uh, can cause a lot of issues. They can really really be stubborn about it and try very very hard to maintain that higher temperature and then in a lot of cases they can fail at that so there's not a whole lot of things that we can do to counteract that we just have to really really hope that we have a kind of a nice gradual descent out of uh out of winter and into spring but you know usually bees have a pretty good uh ability to understand what's going on and not overwork themselves into a situation that they can't back themselves out of, especially if your bees are locally adapted. So, uh, yeah, as the winter goes on and they start rearing brood, um, that temperature is higher and those days get longer and then at some point we're going to have uh, the maples start to bloom and we're going to have pollen available and that will really kickstart the uh, brood rearing when that pollen becomes available. So. Uh, that is, you know, the, the point we're trying to reach is uh, that point where the pollen is available and then the dandelions come out and then there's nectar available and that is the out of the woods uh, mark. And it's usually sometime in early April. Sometimes the maples will bloom in late March. So we have a ways to go before that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's a, an interesting subject, the way that bees deal with uh, the weather in various different climates, especially a climate like this, just kind of blows people's minds when people ask me, well, what do the bees do? Do they, they migrate down south? Well, 
I know some people, some beekeepers make their bees migrate down south, but some bees can just handle it. And so we're hoping we're dealing with a whole bunch of that version of bees. We have been over the last couple of years. I've been very happy and I'm happy with what I see down here today. I uh, saw a few hives with some bees flying out and I see some melted snow around the entrances, meaning there's, you know, warm, moist air leaving these hives showing us that there's still some warm and happy and hopefully healthy bees in there. So, yeah, that's my short take on what bees do over winter in a northern climate. So, let me know any questions you have down below. I'd be happy to chat with you about that. Otherwise, get out there and have some freezing cold fun with your bees. See ya.